Hola, hola a todos. Hola, Calu. Hoy va a ser en inglés. Vamos a conectar con Eddie, que está ya. Hola, María. A punto de aparecer. So, today is going to be in English. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. We are very happy to have you here. Yes. Uh, in our house. In our yes, house. To, to like to be on. <laughs> so we just uh, started. People are slowly joining. Okay. If you, if you want, we can give one minute. Yeah, sure. And uh, uh, I, I already explained you a little bit what we're doing, but in this minute, maybe I can explain you a little bit again. Sure. So we started when the lockdown started in Madrid and we closed the school. We came up with this idea of uh, doing this meeting every day for 30 minutes mm -hmm. um, just to help, just to help ourselves and help others to have those 30 minutes to stop and breathe and try to connect and all this. No? So, The idea that we uh, had was first uh, sharing one test. So that was step number one, where we stop and listen to a text. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always uh, encourage people to close their eyes and just listen to the words and see what the words resonate, what they tell them. Then the second thing we do is the Nadi Sodana, which we guide one round. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we do a second one with no guiding, just everyone do it by themselves. And then the next step is just sitting in silence for like six minutes. That's what we've been doing. But today we do whatever you want. Yeah, today you're no. the one. No, we'll do exactly what you do. Yeah, good. Uh, I know you have a, a, a meditation and we're super happy about that, your meditation uh, today. And uh, yeah, so we can start whenever you want. Okay. Thank you so much for doing this, by the way. No, hey. sure. Thank you for having me on your show, um, your, <laughs> your, your evening. So you start with reading, right? Yes. Okay. So um, I have a few different things to read. They're all short. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. So the first thing we're starting off with is um, uh, The Music of Silence by David Stendel Rast. And... Um, He is a um, he's a Catholic monk, and, he, and he's written about the different time periods of the day that, where the prayer services are celebrated and the music that goes along with it. Okay. Um, so um, the time period now of the day that you're in, in Spain, uh, is the Vespers, the evening hours, the twilight hours. And so I'm going to read you something about the Vespers, the twilight hours, okay? Okay, nice. that sounds good. The way that we can actively bring the spirit of Vespers into everyday life is to light whatever lights we can in this dark world. As the Paulist motto has it, it is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. What candles can we light? A smile, a kind word, a visit? Our society prizes rugged self-sufficiency, being able to handle things on our own. But this individualism yields so much loneliness and despair It is remarkable how much people simply want to be acknowledged, to be seen, to be appreciated. We pretend that we don't need others to take us into account and to care for us. But as soon as someone shines the light of caring attention on us, our stoic facade melts away. We move closer together when it gets dark. The hour of vespers is a call to neighborliness. We all need to move closer to our neighbors in this dark hour of history. If the community singing that informs chant can promote an enhanced sense of common caring in its listeners, then it will be a great monastic gift to the world. Oh, that's really beautiful. So nice. And uh, it resonates uh, a lot right now, no? Yeah. Yeah, it addresses a lot. Yeah. Okay, next I'm going to read um, from um, uh, Meister Eckhart. So I'm starting with the, with the Christian mystics, and then I'm going to move on to, to others. Okay. Okay. So this text um, is a piece he wrote that is entitled, What Mary Was Doing When the Angel Came. 
So I am often asked what Our Lady was doing when the angel came to her. 21 things are predicted of her. She was sitting in time untimely. She was sitting a creature uncreaturely. She was sitting in the body maidenly. Her soul was deiform. Her spirit was contemplating God. Her mind was heavenly calm. Her outward life was altogether lovely. Her soul was generous. To her, nothing at all under God was of any account. Her heart was aflame with the truth. Clear consciousness was her school. Heaven was her cell. Divinity was her reading. Eternal truth was her mentor. She had no inclination toward creatures, but was simply bent upon God. She was liberated from creatures and set upon God alone. Her spirit was inspired with the spirit of God. In body on the earth, her spirit was in heaven. She was in the land of freedom. Where lies the land of freedom? In complete detachment from creatures. And in the land of freedom lies the state of purity. She sat in the cell of recollection and dispassion. She sat in the house of godly certitude. She sat in the school of the Trinity and heard what the schoolmaster of truth was saying. In the darkness, she saw a light. In the silence, she heard a word. In passivity, she was aware of activity. Her soul was all the time resting in eternity and abiding in the Godhead. And she was satisfied with divine perfection. Every line is like, it gives a lot of uh, thought. Like every line has a lot of um, yeah. Yeah, and and again, it's another um, it's another uh, um, you know, uh, call to the times that we're in. You know, we're all we we are in lockdowns, or we're in sheltering in place, or we're on pause, and um, and in that time, we're alone, uh, or we're alone with the people who we have to be alone with, and um, and what's occurring in that aloneness? Um, a lot of people struggle with that aloneness, and um. But, uh, you know, the, the yogis and yoga practitioners, um, actually, aloneness is our practice. Yeah. And what is the ultimate goal of yoga is kaivalya. And kaivalya means aloneness of spirit away from interaction with prakriti, with the, with the world of change, of parinama. So actually, to be comfortable with aloneness is the practice of yogis, the mm -hmm. ultimate practice. Wow. All right, so now I'm going to read you from um, from the uh, the Radiant Sutras, which is a retelling of the Shiva Sutras. Uh, and I'm just going to read one. There are a bunch of poems in here. I'm just going to read one of them, and if we have more time, I'll read a couple more. So we'll start. Okay. Um, All this talk of purity and impurity. These are just opinions. Beyond them are the astonishing energies of creation. Rays of light from a trillion suns illumine the altar of your sky. Rolling blue-green oceans sanctify the air you breathe. In this moment, you are inhaling their blessing. Who are you to call any of this pure or impure? Find the center around which everything revolves. Stand here and be flooded with joy. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful and so difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, you know, the the highest um, Kashmiri Shaivism teachings, you know, those. Okay, let's move on to, um, uh, oh, let's do a little bit more poetry, and then we'll move on to, um, to some more mystics. Um, first, we'll um, read from uh, Rimi. Who is a Muslim poet, not Rumi, but Rimi. Oh. <laughs> um, what is to be done, O Muslims? I no longer recognize myself. I am neither Christian nor Jew, neither Persian nor Muslim. I am not from the East, not from the West, not from the land and not from the sea, not from the workshop of nature, nor from the revolving universe. I am not made of earth, water, air, or fire. I do not come from the Empyrean, nor from the dust. I am neither in the infinite, nor in the finite. I don't come from India, 
China, or Bulgaria, nor from the kingdom of Iraq, nor from the land of Chorasan. I'm neither from this world nor from that, neither from paradise nor from hell. My place has no place. My tracks leave no trace. My body is disembodied and my soul is soulless. For I belong to the beloved. All things finite thus become infinite. I have overcome all separation. I see both worlds as universal unity. And then a, a similar poem from um, the um, Dao Kukushi. And this is quite a nice one also. Um, and I think that I, I chose these two because right now, um, you know, we're seeing more and more the world is um, one thing. You know, we, we have all a, a common quote unquote enemy right now, which is the coronavirus that is leveling us all into a total um, equality. That we are all um, prone to the same things right now that everyone else was. So we yes. think more of the other than we think of ourselves. So these two are about um, how we are all one being. Um, and so this is, a, this is a Zen text. There is one reality which precedes heaven, uh, sorry, there's one reality which precedes even heaven and earth. It has no form, much less a name. It lacks eyes when they look for it. It has no voice and so ears cannot discover it. Oh, my dear exalted friends gathered here, if you long to hear the thundering voice of Dharma, let your talk run dry, empty your thoughts, then you will get to the point of recognizing the one being. <laughs> so we have plenty of time for that right now. Well, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it's about who aren't doctors. Hmm. Um, okay, so let's see. Let's read, um, let's go to Krishnamurti. And then afterward, we'll come back to the Sutra of Loving Kindness. Good. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is the Book of Life, the Daily Meditations with Krishnamurti. I used to read Krishnamurti a lot when I was younger, um, like many of us did in the 1980s. And um, then in Mumbai, when I was there in January, or whenever it was, I can't remember, March, um, one of the... Uh, young men who came to the workshop I was teaching in Mumbai uh, gave me this book. So I'm going to read from it. The Book of Life. Oh, it's going to be backwards because this is all mirrored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is um, The Chattering Mind. Mm -hmm. You know, to perceive something is an astonishing experience. I don't know if you have ever really perceived anything. If you have ever perceived a flower or a face or the sky or the sea. Of course, you see these things as you pass by in a bus or a car, but I wonder whether you have ever taken the trouble actually to look at a flower. And when you do look at a flower, what happens? You immediately name the flower, you are concerned with what species it belongs to, or you say, what lovely colors it has. I would like to grow it in my garden. I would like to give it to my wife or put it in my buttonhole, and so on. In other words, the moment you look at a flower, your mind begins chattering about it. Therefore, you never perceive the flower. You per perceive something only when your mind is silent, when there is no chattering of any kind. If you can look at the evening star over the sea without a movement of the mind, then you can really perceive the extraordinary beauty of it. And when you perceive beauty, do you not also experience the state of love? Surely, beauty and love are the same. Without love, there is no beauty, and without beauty, there is no love. Beauty is in form, beauty is in speech, beauty is in conduct. If there is no love, conduct is empty. Empty. It is merely the product of society, of a particular culture, and what is produced is mechanical, lifeless. But when the mind perceives without the slightest flutter, then it is capable of looking into the total depth of itself. And such perception is really timeless. You don't have to do something to bring it about. There is no discipline, no practice, no method by which you can learn to perceive. You can only perceive by perceiving. Very nice. Nice? Yeah. Yes, super. Okay. Uh, let's go on to... Um, 
to some very short ones from Nisargadatta Maharaj from I Am That. Um, oh. And, uh, you know, with, uh, we, in our spiritual practices, we, we, do a lot of, um, we do a lot of striving. Um, it's natural. A lot of, sorry? Striving, striving. Yeah. Yeah, we make a lot of effort. You know, it's a big effort to um, get up in the morning and practice. It's a big effort to do Ashtanga Yoga. I mean, God knows, like anyone who has ever done Ashtanga Yoga knows, like, it's like a big effort. And so, um, you, you know, we get effort confused with, um, with attainments, you know, and we get attainments confused with, with success. And we get success confused with knowing who we are. Uh, but really, all we want to do is know who we are. And, and to do that, all we have to do is look at ourselves. And so any of the practices that we do actually are vehicles for learning how to look at ourselves. But because it's hard to look at ourselves, uh, instead we'd rather look at the practice and think, oh, this is the thing that, I'm, that it's about. This is what I'm trying to do. Because it's easier to get good at this particular skill than it is to see that actually I'm a real asshole. You know, actually <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I have, you know, I'm arrogant and I have flaws and I'm self-centered and, you know, I'm narcissistic. And that's who wants to look at that. That's not why we started doing yoga. You know, we didn't start doing yoga so we could see that we suck. We started doing yoga because we want to be free. So, um, so we look to the practice rather than looking to ourselves quite often. And what I like about that particular text of Krishnamurti where he says, there is no practice, you know, there is no, no discipline that will help you to know yourself other than knowing yourself. There is no practice that will help you perceive other than perceiving and being honest about it. And then everything's okay, you know, then you're okay with being arrogant or being a bit of an ass or being self-centered. You know, you go, okay, that's not really me. That's just a byproduct. It's an add-on. Yeah, so okay. true. So yeah. True. So uh, here's from Nisargadatta Maharaj from I Am That. Um, there's on every page of this book, there's something that will blow your mind. When effort is needed, effort will appear. When effortlessness becomes essential, it will assert itself. You need not push life about. Just flow with it and give yourself completely to the task of the present moment, which is the dying now to the now. For living is dying. Without death, death life cannot be. Get hold of the main thing that the world and the self are one and perfect. Only your attitude is faulty and needs readjustment. I like that. Only your attitude is faulty and needs readjustment. This process or readjustment is what you call sadhana. You come to it by putting an end to indolence and using all your energy to clear the way for clarity and charity. But in reality, these are all signs of inevitable growth. Don't be afraid. Don't resist. Don't delay. Be what you are. There is nothing to be afraid of. Trust and try. Experiment honestly. Give your real being a chance to shape your life. You will not regret. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's read one more from Miss Argadakta. Okay. Um, that which makes you think that you are a human is not human. It is but a dimensionless point of consciousness. I'll read that again. That which makes you think that you are a human is not human. It is but a dimensionless point of consciousness, a conscious nothing. All you can say about yourself is, I am. You are pure being, awareness, bliss. To realize that is the end of all seeking. You come to it when you see all you think yourself to be as mere imagination and stand aloof in pure awareness of the transient as transient, imaginary as imaginary, unreal as unreal. It is not at all difficult, but detachment is needed. It is the clinging to the false that makes the true so difficult to see. Once you understand that the false needs time, and what needs time is false, you are nearer the reality, which is timeless, ever in the now. Eternity in time is mere repetitive, repetitiveness, like the movement of a clock. 
It flows from the past into the future endlessly, an empty perpetuity. Reality is what makes the present so vital, so different from the past and future, which are merely mental. If you need time to achieve something, it must be false. The real is always with you. You need not wait to be what you are. Only you must not allow your mind to go out of yourself in search. When you want something, ask yourself, do I really need it? And if the answer is no, then just drop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shall I read two more? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll read I two more. Have time. Yes, please. Okay, I'll read two more short things. Um, first, I'll read the, um, the Sutra of Loving Kindness from Hinayana Buddhism. And, um, and then I'll read um, one uh, other tiny little thing. Okay. So shall he act who strives for salvation once he has recognized the place of silence. Let him be energetic, upright, unswerving, yet gentle, responsive, and without pride. Let him be frugal and modest, not too busy, but clever. Let him rein in his senses and be easily satisfied. Let peace and happiness come down on all creatures. May they all be happy. Whatever living creatures there may be, whether they move about or stay put, small, middle-sized or tall, weakly, sturdy or strong, before our eyes are hidden away, nearby or at home far away, already born or still in the womb, may all creatures be happy. He should never revile another and never despise anyone anywhere. No one shall seek another's harm from anger or hostile mindedness. Like a mother who protects her son, her one and only son with her life, he shall strive to free his mind from all barriers towards each and every creature. His kindness should embrace the whole world. He should free his mind from barriers, upwards, downwards, far and wide, not constrained by hate and enmity, but pure. Whether standing, walking, sitting, or lying down, he shall beget this frame of mind and never succumb to indolence. This is called divine lingering in the world. Mm. Okay. So this is what we've gone through so far. Selections from wow. all these. You did your homework. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so now I'll read, I'll read one last little thing before you guys leave. I'll let you leave the pranayama. And um, so uh, I decided to read one last little thing from my book. Yes. So, Look. We are uh -huh. so connected. <laughs> All right. And the reason I, I chose this little piece is because um, the Spanish edition of my book just came out. Yeah. And, oh, good. So now it's, and I believe it's going to be available um, completely on ebook um, since That's it's hard great. to print versions to people. And I think they're offering the ebooks free as well. Um, I'm not too sure, but we'll, we'll find out pretty soon. But the Spanish edition is out. That's okay. Great. Oh, so uh, this is from the very end. Um, a guru is a vessel who carries knowledge. Gu means remover and ru means darkness. The darkness refers to seekers not knowing who they truly are or what their purpose is. Darkness covers the inner light of knowledge and yoga is a practice that can help remove darkness, just as turning on a light bulb removes the darkness from a room. The guru is not the light bulb. The guru is the one who can teach you how to turn on the switch. And in the end, you are the one who has to pull it. The Kata Upanishad explains that in the end, it is the inner pull of the student that is the driving force behind transformation. Nayamatma pravachanena labhyo namedaya nabahuna shrutena yame shivaiva vrinute tena labhya tasyesha atma vrinute tanugam swam. The self cannot be known through much study, nor through the intellect, nor through much hearing of teachings. It can be known by the self alone that the aspirant seeks to know. The self alone reveals its own nature to the seeker who is seeking it. The Upanishads say that you don't have to constantly look outside yourself for other people's knowledge, for other people's knowledge to know God or to know your true self. 
Look straight to God to know God and look straight toward yourself to know yourself. Truth reveals itself from our own desire to know and not from any outside source. This is the ultimate teaching in self-reliance, but a self-reliance based on knowing who we truly are and one that is fueled by humility, devotion, practice, and most important, love. That is such an important test, I feel, for both students and teachers. Yeah. How do you feel that? Well, because um, I feel like as a teacher, so, so often I fall into the mistake of believing I'm achieving this as a teacher and look what I, you know, look the result that I managed to get in this person or, to, and, and, or that you have to do everything. Huh? That, that you have to or that you have to do everything for the student. Like it, it helps me both, uh, both as a student to, I believe, put my teacher on the right place and with the mm -hmm. right expectations and knowing what is his part of my process and what is my part of my process. And also as a teacher, exactly the same. Like I can try to give um, some uh, teaching or some tools And then if the students use the tools, that's their work. And that's their, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, like I'm doing everything and I can go like, oh, look what you managed. No? So I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well in English. Yeah. But, yeah. but it, it's, that's what it was coming on my mind with, when you were reading it. And it's also a relief in a way. Yeah. Yeah. It takes the pressure off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Both sides. And, you know? and it puts you on a more realistic place. Yeah. Like, Yeah, uh, each, each side has a role to play and they have to understand that role and, and not step, out, step outside those bonds, boundaries yeah. and expect that, um, that um, you know, they can do more than they really can. Um, exactly. And um, the, um, I was also reading, I almost read one text by um, a, um, let's say, Sogyo Rinpoche. And it was um, basically saying that Um, if you do something good, you know, we'll never pat you on the back and tell you that you've done good. Um, we will just say, okay, time to move on to the next thing. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, they'll, they'll never be that, you know, oh, you've done so good. And that's the, um, that's kind of reinforcement that we so often look for because we're, you know, we have old traumas and, you know, and we haven't been acknowledged or seen from the time when we were kids. And so yeah. we look to replace that from our teachers expecting, oh, to be told that we've done so well, or we've done a posture right, or, you know, mm. oh, you're so yeah. good, you can move on to the next one. So there's a lot of um, superimposition yeah. of our, you know, our past um, history, whatever stories we have, whether they're traumas or just past hurts, that we then superimpose onto the expectations we have of the teacher-student relationship, and that yeah. sends things in a very wrong direction. Um, yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, um, the guru tradition is that the, uh, you know, the guru is immensely respected, and, and there's tremendous gratitude towards the guru for the teachings that they give you that help you to know yourself. Um, but, you know, what you, we don't want to do is then um, reverse that and go, it's all about the guru, they're so great, I'm so small, I'm filled with nothing, I'm filled with shame, I'm filled with guilt. It's all about, you know, and this is what Nisargadatta basically is saying. Um, yeah. He's saying, you know, that's all your stuff, but that's not the purpose of the guru. Yeah. Um, it was to, to show you where the, where the light switch is and you turn it on and the light comes on and that light is already inside of you. Yeah. So, but that doesn't mean that you don't throw out the guru. It means that you understand what the relationship is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but and I, I always like to say to people, you know, in, in this regard, like for you guys, you're yoga teachers, I'm also a yoga teacher. But, um, but that's all we are. We are not gurus, we're, we're yoga teachers. We're not in the Indian cultural tradition or the Hindu cultural tradition where the guru system has come out from. So um, we, uh, uh, where I like to frame it is, at best I can be your spiritual friend and I can instruct you in the techniques I, I know, and that's it. That's the limit of me. Uh, and I don't want to play any other game other than that. So um, I so understand you friends. so well. And yeah. I hope some of my students are listening to this also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some of them that I have to fight with so that they don't call me master and stuff like this. Yeah. 
We, you just we're explained it so well. You know, Ram Das said it very nicely. We're all just walking each other home. And, yeah. you know, when we're walking each other home, then well, who walks you home? Your friend does. And, you know, and, and if it's on the same path of, of the spirit, then it's your spiritual friend who's walking alongside with you. That's what we're all doing together. I mean, that's, for me, that's it. That's what we're doing together. And, yeah. so, and again, it's beautiful. And again, it's a relief yeah. from both sides. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Eddie, so much. Thank you very much. You're nice. welcome. And, but that's us. In India, it's a different story. The Guru tradition is yeah. from India. It's very alive there. It should be followed. It should maintain. But for us, we need something slightly different. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so it's a, we've been doing this for half an hour. Now you guys do pranayama. I, and think, I, along. I think we might go straight away to the meditation. Is that ah. okay? It's, this is your game, man. I'm just here for the ride. Yes. Okay. So if you want to write us on the meditation, that's, that's great. Because we have 15 minutes and you said it's about 15 minutes. Oh, uh, you want me to lead a meditation? Yeah. Is, is, is that not what we talked about? Oh, I thought you were going to do the Nadi Shodhana and then lead the silence. And that's fine with me too. It's really up to you guys. Anything you want. No, no, no. That's, no, no, no. That's, I, I express myself wrongly then. No, no, no. Oh, okay. You, you proposed uh, doing a meditation yourself, right? Uh, yeah, I did. I'm, that might have been a stupid pro proposal, but yeah. Our, okay, up to you. Do you want to do it or we, we go with our program? Up to you, honestly. Uh, you do your program. I don't okay. want to disturb your program. You do your sure. program. That's yeah, right. I'm your guest. I'm your You've guest. done a lot anyway, so thank you so much. Yes, we can you. ask you for more. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for some Nadi Sodana in Spanish? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, hacemos como todas las tardes. Espalda recta, hacemos cinco respiraciones profundas. Five deep breaths first. Uno. Inhala. Exhala. Dos. Inhala. Exhala. Tres. Inhala. Exhala. Cuatro. Inhala. Exhala. Cinco. Coloca la mano derecha en el orificio derecho. Raise your hand. Inhala por el izquierdo. Inhale to left. Tapa. Exhala por el derecho. Exhale to right. Tapa. Inhala por el izquierdo. Tapa. Exhala por el derecho. Tapa, inhala por el izquierdo. Tapa, exhala por el derecho. Tapa, inhala por el izquierdo. Tapa, exhala por el derecho. Tapa, inhala por el izquierdo. Último, last one. Tapa, exhala por el derecho. Inhala por el derecho. Now inhale through right. Tapa, exhala por el izquierdo. And exhale through left. Four more times. Tapa, inhala por el derecho. Tapa, exhala por el izquierdo. Tapa, inhala por el derecho. Tapa, 
etapa exalaparicular. Etapa inhala por el derecho. Etapa exhala por el izquierdo. Último. Etapa inhala por el derecho. Etapa exhala por el izquierdo. Now, if you want to do one more round in silence. Inhala por el izquierdo. So we usually finish, um, and I'm going to explain it in English today, obviously because Eddie is joining us, and also uh, most people who repeat with us, they already know, but maybe some people are new today. What we do, and we call meditation, is just uh, sitting still and just try to keep your mind watching your breath as it happens, and just do the simple exercise that any time that your mind goes thinking, just realizing and bringing it back to your breath. That's just everything we need to do. And we always um, encourage, or, uh, not so encourage, but propose this work of keeping uh, all the people who are helping in this situation, in, uh, many people uh, risking their own health and their own lives, uh, trying to help people who are suffering right now uh, from this uh, virus, from being isolated, from being separate from the people they love. Just keep them on, on the heart, uh, keep them present while you are breathing and connecting. And also see if you can feel the connection with the, with the others. The, like, see if you can try to keep the connection inside, but also try to connect with the others. That's what we usually um, Propose and if you already have any other suggestion or anything that you want to add, no, no, okay, okay. So we do six minutes. First, I start with the gong. After three minutes, I play the gong for people who feel it's too much. Then they can do just three minutes, and then we keep going up to six minutes, and then it's over. Okay. So we take a deep breath first. Exhale and go.
OK. So thank you so, so, so much, Eddie. Um, we really, really enjoyed, first of all, thank seeing you, you and talking to you, first of all. I'm super happy to see you and talk to you. And also, I really um, enjoyed and loved the text because uh, one thing that I loved about them is that um, they reflect something that I see in you and I really like about you, and, and it's the integration. So you brought texts from Christianity, from Muslim, from uh, India, and that, uh, that was something I really, really liked. And thank you for your generosity, really. Yeah, this is the generosity. You. This is it's friendship. <laughs> I always yeah. like seeing you guys. <laughs> it is both. It's both. So all our love to you and your family. Yes. You guys as well. Take care and we hope to see you soon. Yeah, we we'll yeah, we'll see, we'll see you Monday morning for the chanting. Yes, yes. Every right. every morning. And I'm really enjoying this thing you're doing. And I absolutely recommend everyone because it's a beautiful theme. They can see in your web page, right? In edistem.com. I really recommend because yeah. it's also a beautiful moment to stop and connect with others. So thank you so much. And we stay in touch. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Bye bye. Bye.